Hello, I'm Paul Hardingham, the Vicar of St Peter's Halliwell, and welcome to Thought for the Day. If you're somebody like me who uses Zoom a lot, you'll be very familiar with the comment, you're still on mute. After a day of Zoom meetings, so often the last thing that we want is to use it to chat to friends or family, or even to attend church on Sunday online. I think it reveals a wider issue that we face. We know that staying connected together in, pan in a pandemic is hard. When we're tired and busy, it's easy to stop connecting with others. We forget that this would encourage us so often in faith or well-being. Perhaps it also expresses itself in avoiding sending that text, not phoning somebody up or sending a card when we want to encourage them. It reminds me of Paul's words in Romans 7. He says there, for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. I know myself that rather than making the effort, it's often easier to disconnect with others and God, even though connecting with them will give me a better sense of value, purpose and identity. Although such patterns of behaviour can make us feel safer, in reality, they prevent us from living the lives that God intends for us. Later on in Romans 7, Paul says this, What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God, who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, we can ask for his power to act differently. Failing to do this is probably the most significant reason why we so often don't experience God's best in our lives. Recently I came across this idea in Ignatian spirituality. It's called agere contra. And what it means is literally to act against. It's the idea that when we deliberately choose to go against what we're tempted to do, then we actually can do the right thing. For example, it's easy, isn't it, to opt out of giving time to others or God. It's useful in dealing with temptation or bad habits, but it can also develop and deepen our spiritual lives. For example, if we know that social media is getting a bit of an addiction in our lives, we can act against it by deliberately limiting the time we spend on it. We might act against staying too long in bed in the morning to get up earlier to spend time with God. We might also choose to act against simply turning on the telly when we come at home or spending time playing games on our phone when we could call a friend who might be in need of a chat. I know from experience this is always challenging but it does highlight the habits and the anxieties that perhaps we need to challenge and it does help us to focus on the other things, particularly spiritual life with God and the habit of prayer and Bible reading. As this freedom comes through victory, the victory of Jesus, it will be effective in our lives as we seek to ask him and as we keep our focus and reliance on him. Now next month sees the start of Lent and this always provides an ideal opportunity to examine ourselves, to look at our lives and think about the practices that can help us to develop new habits, to act against. I, will, I wonder what we need to overcome in our lives. It's an opportunity to reflect on that and do something about it. So let's keep reminding ourselves that God is bigger than Zoom, to ensure that we don't disconnect that we don't allow our struggles to isolate us from others and from God. Let's keep turning up despite however we might feel. And why wait for Lent when you can do something about this today? The call is that we might be committed to do the right thing rather than simply the easier thing.